Hey, what's going on? My name is Jens and today I'm going to tell you my best tips for macro photography and macro videography. We're going to start very simple answering basic questions like what you need to get very close and capture high detailed images. Then the video kind of progresses. I'm going to tell you how to get the best image possible with the gear with the setup you got. And at the end, it's getting pretty exciting because I'm going to tell you how I filmed and how you can film macro with a high magnification and high quality without any shaky footage at the end. Let's do it. Before I'm going to answer the question how to improve the quality of macro images, we have to talk about what if you don't have a macro lens. I'm using an APC camera together with a 90mm macro lens, but what if you're using a kit lens? That is not a big deal. If you don't own a macro lens, I got four solutions for you. Starting with the worst solution, which is also the cheapest. Before I got a real macro lens, I got those diopter filters. They can be mounted to any lens with the same diameter, allowing the lens to get much closer, getting a higher magnification. That's really a good start because I just paid 20 euros for four different diameters, offering four different magnifications. The easiest way is to use just extension tubes. You can mount them between your lens and your camera body and the result is pretty the same. You can get much closer getting a higher magnification. Let's talk about two solutions which I would really recommend and that is the Reynox DCR250 which can be mounted. A ladybug! No way! <laughs> can you see it? Okay, let's bring that ladybug outside. Maybe that's some remains from my last ladybug video. Okay, back to the topic. Now let's talk about the two recommendations I get for you. If you don't have a macro lens with a very high magnification, the Rainox DCR250 is a really nice choice because you can mount it to every lens with a diameter between 52 and 67 millimeter and it's just super simple. Macro lens, whoa, no macro lens. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry about that. Actually, this is pretty, pretty safe, but I'm kind of nervous, I guess, today. And my second solution for you is the Nysai macro filter lens adapter. This can also be mounted to the top of your lens, giving you high quality, high detail macro magnification. This is actually, yeah, I'd say my favorite choice but it is very heavy and you have to mount it all the time and this mounted which just costs time so most of the time I, re I use the Raynox because when I need more magnification I just can put it onto my lens and if I don't need or don't want I just easily remove it by a click. Okay now that we got our macro lens or our lens together with some kind of adapter to get high magnification let's talk about my favorite settings for macro photography. Actually, there's just one situation where I would switch from manual focus to autofocus. And that's when I wanna catch an insect in flight. On all other situations, I'm always going with manual focus. And that's because I want to keep the focus on the eye of an insect, for example. And that's something which is actually pretty impossible for autofocus, especially when we have a very, very small field of depth. Okay, now I want to talk about some special macro photography images and how to get them. Before I started with macro photography, I had seen some images of jumping spiders on the YouTube channel of Stuart Wood and some images of insects and especially high detail of the compound eyes. So my goal was to get as close as needed to get a compound eye of an insect. Yeah, and these are really the first macro images I have ever taken. Yeah, I got extension tubes and combined them with the diopter lens you just saw in the beginning of the video. Then I was able to get closer, but the field of depth was so small that I was not really able to focus on the eye anymore. So I had to close the aperture to get a bigger field of depth, resulting in a high ISO and the resolution, the, the amount of detail on the compound eye was gone. So the most important thing in macro photography really is 
to use a flash and a do it yourself or whatever flash diffuser to diffuse the light. Then you're able to close down the aperture to f9, f13 and at the same time you have a low ISO and high detail. And here's one tip when you try to take an image of an insect, especially when you try to take an image of the eyes of an insect. I go most of the time handheld and then it is pretty difficult to really go down to the eye level of the insect, especially when, when it's down. So I'd recommend to grab the flower or whatever the insect is sitting on with one hand and the camera with the other hand so that you can rotate the flower up for example and take an image on eye level with the insect. Trust me then the image will look much better than just when you when you're firing from the top or from the side with the insect. Always try to get down to the eye level of whatever you're trying to shoot. Let's talk about my favorite part of macro photography. That is actually when I go beyond one-to-one -one magnification. When you got a macro lens like the 90 mm from Sony, it just offers a magnification of one-to-one, -one, which is pretty okay when you're shooting at an ISO of 100 and the camera like the Sony A6000 or 6300, you get 24 megapixels, you can crop a little bit and you get pretty okay image of compound eyes. But I'd like to get even closer because I want to use my camera as a microscope. And that is only possible when you get a macro lens like, yeah, Laura offers some pretty good with magnification between 2x and 5x, or you have to combine your one-to-one -one magnification lens with the Reynox DCR250, or use some kind of cheap step-up ring together with an easy adapter to make your one-to-one -one magnification lens a two-to-one magnification lens. And one addition, when you're using an APC camera, the magnification is even higher than on a full-frame camera. So those are two topics which you should keep in mind when you try to get as much detail and as close as possible. Okay, great. Now let's talk about macro videography. This topic is way more difficult because we cannot use a flash anymore and a flash diffuser. At least, I don't know a flash who could fire 50 times a second. So when we want to keep that amount of detail at a low ISO, we somehow have to add light to our macro video. One solution might be to just open up the aperture, but imagine when you're filming with a lens like this and the field of depth is really uh, short, you can really not keep an insect or even an eye of an insect into focus just because the focus plane is so so thin. And when I started with macro videography, I used an open aperture like f5.6 because I didn't want to have any noise at all in my videos, but that was a huge mistake. After reviewing most of my footage, I could just delete it because nothing was into focus. I was shaking, whatever I wanted to film was just not in focus and the footage was horrible. So the first solution is keep the aperture at f9 to f16. That means that you could get a lot of noise, but you don't have to delete the footage because when there is something going on, at least you you will be able to capture that moment in focus. One of the biggest problems when taking a video at a closer distance is camera shake. Of course, you can use a tripod. But imagine when you're out there, for example, in the rainforest and you discover something which is really interesting, an insect is fighting with another insect, whatever, you just have seconds to be there and capture that moment. That's why I always shoot at 1080p 100 frames a second. This allows me to slow down the footage four times. So when there's something interesting going on and I just captured half a second, at least I have two seconds of great video footage. But that at the same time is also a problem for me because I like to shoot at the highest magnification possible and shooting at 1080p just leaves me no room for cropping. Going up to 4K just allows me to crop afterwards in post and reveal more detail. And now it's getting really interesting. To sum up, the perfect video for me looks like this. I use my one-to-one -one magnification lens on an APC camera, so that's actually 1.5 to 1 magnification. Then I'm adding the Reynox, for example, to double my magnification and then film in 4K to crop afterwards to double my magnification again. 
and that at an aperture of f13 to f16. So how's that gonna work? Because when at that magnification we have that camera shape problem again. And here is my solution for you. My first tip is to use a small lightweight tripod as monopod. So it is very easy to follow an insect with keeping the image stabilized. Or you take the big one and I'd also recommend to lose the screw of the ball head. So you get an additional axis and it's very easy to follow the movement of an insect, for example, while keeping the video completely stable. But there's still one less problem. When I use the settings I just told you, my ISO will be around 6000, maybe 10,000. So we have to add light. And this is my solution for you. I use a video light like this. And when I'm using a tripod, I could put this somewhere or on a second tripod to illuminate the scene I want to film. But when I am out there or in the rainforest, I need another solution. That's why I have mounted this to this uh, sheet metal plate. And this plate will be mounted to the shoe of my camera flash. My final camera looks like this. Sony a6300 90mm macro lens together with the Raynox. And then I have added some light to the top of my lens. And I am able to shoot at high magnification, a closed aperture and a large field of depth. And using the tripod, I'm able to remove all the camera shape. After getting beaten up the last week when I was talking about my earnings on a viral YouTube video, I really hope that you guys this time like this kind of content and that I could give you some helpful tips to improve your macro photography and macro videography. And what do you think? Do you have any questions? Do you think this video was too long or maybe too short? Feel free to leave a comment below. Have a good day and hopefully see you next week in the next video.